content. With that being said, let's get back to it. So let's talk about the upside. Advantage Plus campaigns, especially if you've been using lookalikes and retargeting and interest groups and all of this other nonsense, can absolutely help you grow profit, but it won't help you grow the business nearly as well as not using them at all. But it will limit your ability to grow. Using it ultimately means less net new money, especially when you extrapolate it out over time and reaching fewer net new people. So you're making less money over time and you're gonna bring in fewer people into your funnel. So ultimately, this isn't scalable and it's a liability if you're relying solely on it. So where's the value in here? Because there absolutely is some. Well, let me tell you. Because we know that it creates ad fatigue, and because we know it does a very good job of forcing impressions on people that are mid or bottom funnel in their customer journey, even if they have never seen us before, we can use it to create ad fatigue against our own control ads. Remember, if you're using a one campaign setup where you've got a control environment and a few dynamic creative tests to improve upon it, you might be sitting in a spot where some of your ads are so good you can't test. Well, what if we now say you're so good you're a liability? How do we maximize the opportunity of an asset like that? We can put that single post ID into an Advantage Plus campaign where it becomes far more aggressive at reaching people who are already in the buying spirit. And we know that ad's going to do very well there, but it comes at the expense of the long-term stability of that ad, which creates opportunity for our dynamic creative tests to earn more spend share. And then ultimately, if we have a single campaign with some ads that are are so good we can never test anymore, we can now leverage those proven assets to generate more revenue in a way that also depreciates their value, which lets us continue to do more testing so that we can focus on scaling efficiency for the future. And one of the things we have to remember here is because it is so aggressive to people who are mid and bottom funnel, very much just like cost caps and retargeting and lookalikes, they're using predictive algorithms to reach people, not necessarily because your content is gonna give them the best experience on the platform, but you're more forcing your message onto people and kind of disrespecting them as a standard operating procedure, you're going to see less incremental revenue from your Facebook ads. Your report might look great, but if you increase your sales on Facebook by 20%, your bank account might only raise by five or 10 because these aren't necessarily net new sales that you're not getting from other channels as well. And that's one of the biggest issues that we have to balance out. Is it worthwhile for us to ultimately take data, depreciate our relationship with the platform, to generate a higher volume of sales in the platform in a way that does not linearly grow our bank account. The honest truth is, for most people, just like with retargeting, just like with lookalikes, just like with cost caps, it's a very sexy liability that ultimately creates more harm than good. All right, so let's wrap this up because I know this is a very highly technical topic. Number one, Advantage Plus campaigns are extraordinarily good at showing your ads to people who are in the market to buy. Number two, that ultimately means that your ads will fatigue in a way that otherwise they wouldn't have to because you're forcing bad experiences onto people as a standard operating procedure. Number three, because you're forcing bad experiences onto people, your cost of advertising across all of your campaign will go up and the quality of impressions that you buy go down. Remember, above the fold impressions are cheaper and earned. And number four, yes, these often generate better revenue, especially on the platform, but the added purchase conversion value that you see in the Facebook report in no way is a direct one-to-one -one correlation with the added revenue you get as a business. So ultimately, all of those things put together means that this is depreciating our proven ads in a way that raises our advertising costs and ultimately doesn't necessarily bring us nearly as much money as we think we're getting. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you use it sparingly, like with cost caps, if you wanna use them, use 10% of your budget there to take your best proven ads.
impressions and use the data you have to force those impressions onto a small select group of people so that you can ultimately bring down your overall blended CPA and create some depreciation in your proven assets because ultimately you've maxed out your ability to scale efficiency. You cannot get any cheaper on your CPA in an omni-channel fashion and your ads are so good, you can't run any creative tests in a CBO with DCT. So we make our strongest players a little bit weaker by forcing those messages onto people who are more prone to buy. And ultimately it's a leveraged depreciation to create more opportunity. That works really well. So in summary, it can be good, especially in the short term. But if you want to ultimately grow your business, it's more than likely a liability and it should only be used sparingly with proven assets. And remember, if your standard operating procedure as a business is to invest heavily in depreciating the value of your relationship with your vendors in a way that also increases the cost of advertising and brings you less net new customers and doesn't incrementally grow your business nearly as well as you could otherwise, Basically, what you're doing is say, I'm going to get rich by buying depreciating assets. That doesn't make any sense. Nobody ever got rich by buying things high and then watching it as it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and lower and lower in value till eventually they're broke. That doesn't work. So the more you're using Advantage Plus and cost caps and lookalikes and retargeting and all these other liabilities, the more your Facebook advertising cost is going to go up. Your CPMs are going to go up. Your revenue isn't going to go up nearly as fast as it used to. And your funnel is going to dry out. So be strategic and understand, do I really need this? And the honest truth is 80, 90% of you don't. It's a liability and a luxury that you don't need and can't afford. And that's totally fine. Running an Advantage Plus campaign won't solve the problem that you have if you're not yet running only broad. If you're not yet using DCTs in a single campaign with CBO. If you're still promoting a few different products or a dozen different offers. If you're still doing a ton of creative tests and a ton of landing page tests all at the same exact time, you can actually just optimize your operations instead of introducing more instability and higher costs as an effort to ultimately produce a better business, which again, doesn't make any sense. So to close this out, Advantage Plus is sexy. It's fun and it's useful, but it's also a luxury and a liability that you probably don't need. Now, what we want to do in business is invest in appreciating assets, buy things low and stick with it as it continues to be worth more and more value. And the way that I try to provide appreciating value and the number one investment you can make in Facebook ads to ultimately see a greater appreciating value is investing in education for yourself. Down below, you'll see links to the Disruptor School and the Facebook Ads MBA program. Those are the single best investments you can make if running Facebook ads and growing a business is your ultimate goal. You'll also see links for my newsletter. You'll see also links for the merch store and a few other goodies in there too. So that being said, YouTube thinks you might like a couple of these videos. Don't forget to smash the button. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.